Hi friends and welcome to the March 24th, 2023 edition of the Astro Energy Astrology Podcast. It's me, Shelly Overton. Welcome. And I want to let you know that if you are interested in a private reading out of the gate, you can get me at angeliczodiac.com or on Facebook or in email. You can do an email at so at, that's the letter S, o at angeliczodiac.com. This week, again, I've got a lot going on and I'm having minimal time to record this on time. My apologies, but thank you. Thank you very much for um, watching. And I'm going to try and have as few edits as I possibly can on this one. So we're just going to kind of throw everything out there and let you know what's going on. And we'll get going. We're going to just kind of run through the week. And then I will look at the chart and tell you other things I see. And it's going to probably be a fairly short podcast so I can get it up. Okay, so today, Friday, we have a conjunction of the moon in Taurus to Venus in Taurus. So today, the moon in Taurus is conjunct Uranus in Taurus at 7.52 p.m. And that means that we are going to be seeing a lot of energy around alternative currencies, around independence associated with money and finance. And also love situations are going to be shifting and changing. I hope my camera isn't going to fall off its pedestal. Oh my gosh, the editing options are getting worse by the minute. I had my hair up. It was not doing what I wanted. So I have it up in a little chignon, little French twist thing. Okay, Mars goes into Cancer. How happy are we? Mars goes into Cancer on Saturday morning at 7.45 a.m. Eastern and 4.45 a.m. Pacific. We are very excited about this. Um, Seven months, Mars in Gemini. No offense to my Geminis, but um, I do have a Gemini friend. If anybody out there does Reiki or can hear, please send Reiki and positive prayers and thoughts and wishes to her. Her name is Janice, and she's in the hospital, possibly with a stroke. She's very young, only 62. So please do send positive healing to her. And uh, Moon enters Gemini the day. Mars gets out of Gemini, the moon enters Gemini, and Mars in Cancer, that is my Mars, and it means that we are more focused on home and family, mother energy, nurturing, we are sensitive, we are adjusting every couple days based on where the moon is, because Cancer is ruled by the moon. Mars in Cancer answers to the moon's influence, and so that is going to be a rapid shift every couple days. It also means that the moon shifting into Gemini means it kind of extends Mars's influence for a couple more days in the Gemini energy. But even though it is in Cancer, it will influence us through home and family and through mother nurturing energy. But because the moon's in Gemini, we're going to be really chatty about and social about home and family. And that's where we want to spend our time more social around the home. Then on, I'm going to just skip Sunday. Sunday is just going to be kind of, hey, we've got all this energy. We're feeling the moon in Gemini. We're feeling um, Chiron in Aries. Currently, you can see with the chart, we have so many planets in Aries, Sun, Mercury, Chiron, Jupiter, and the asteroid Vesta, which is home and hearth. And so all those planets answer to Mars, which answers to the moon, which answers to Gemini again. Mercury in a roundabout way is answering to uh, kind of itself, believe it or not. And I will I will go over that real quick with you. Mercury, the ruling planet of Gemini, is in the sign of Aries. Aries answers to Gemini until it goes into Cancer. Cancer answers to the moon. The moon goes into Gemini. So now we have Mercury answering to Mars in, in Cancer. Cancer answering to the moon in Gemini. And so Mercury is answering to itself. (laughs) Isn't that kind of ironic? But it just means that there is a lot of energy coming in around action, around home and family. It can mean a restriction of the energy of Aries and taking action. Mars going into Cancer goes from air to more covert water energy. And energy of any of the water signs is going to pull back and be a little bit out of the spotlight much more in our feels, much more wanting to have alone time or away from public busyness. Um, I was at Cracker Barrel today and it was so busy and it's kind of a warm country, homey feeling, very homey energy in that store. 
and it was so busy that people were all over the place. And, um, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having that comforting energy in the home environment. And if you're out in public, like a place like Cracker Barrel would be a good place to go. You know, the homey energy is really what is accented. Now, if you're looking for more cancer accented energy, and Mars answering to the moon in Cancer happens on Tuesday at 6.22 a.m. Eastern and 3.22 a.m. Pacific. And so we're going to get that double Cancer energy the moon will go through. Join up with Mars at 9.19 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday of this coming week. And so that means the moon and Mars will be really forcing us to take some ownership, to take some much needed away time in the home environment, really focus our energy on making the home a place we want to be, or just being away and nurturing ourselves and knowing that baking bread could be something that is a good thing to do, or renovating the house or working on creative projects, being with our children, all of those wonderful Cancerian things to do. Um, and cancer is also kind of like a clean home environment. So maybe it's time to clean and do laundry as well. Who knows? Uh, Wednesday, the moon is also in cancer, squaring Jupiter and squaring Mercury and Aries. That's going to be like the energy. I, I actually know someone who has strong Aries in the 12th right now, transit. And it's really frustrating because they want to get out and do, 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 which is the Aries energy. But the Cancer square of Mars, the ruling planet of Aries, is saying, no, now's the time to be at home, to really nurture yourself, to, you know, rein it in and decide what you want to do and move forward with that. Thursday, Mars is trying in 120 degree aspect to Saturn and Pisces. So Mars and Cancer, Saturn and Pisces, it's kind of strange to see this energy because I'm so used to the Mars and Gemini, but now Mars is in Cancer and Saturn's been in Aquarius for how long? Two and a half years. And now he is also in a water sign. So we're seeing this energy in the water. It's really shifted where we focus our time and no longer air and fire are no longer air, but water. And so we are going to have this major altering energy of finding out about emotions of finding about out about sensitivity and really evaluating our feelings on things. Where are our feelings and what action Mars in a water energy are we going to take? What are the ideas? Um, Mercury is in Aries right now and that is wanting to take action. The idea hits, we immediately want to take action. That's kind of the basic energy for the week. Moon in Gemini, Moon in Cancer, Mars being triggered. Um, Mercury joins up with Jupiter in Aries. So Mercury, Jupiter want us to do things, but the Cancerian energy is super strong and it's really bogging us down. So it's going to be more emotional. And then Thursday, uh, Venus and Uranus join up in Taurus. So that is better for stocks, better for tech. Um, I am not an accountant. I am not an economics major. I'm just telling you from an entertainment point of, point of view with astrology, we're going to see better stocks on Thursday. Moon enters Leo five minutes after Venus joins with Uranus. And that is the energy of being in the spotlight, being center of attention, holding court, being creative, wanting one-on-one -on -one connections, going out to dinner, being social. And, um, and then the moon opposes Pluto in Aquarius because now Pluto is no longer in Capricorn. It's in Aquarius. Pluto and Aquarius opposition is going to mean that um, to the moon is going to be about connectivity and understanding uh, what our place is with connections and community. So we're going to see that on Thursday. And that brings us around to Friday, which is very low aspects only two. Yeah. So Friday, we have moon and Leo trying to the sun in Aries, moon and Leo trying to Chiron in Aries. So the sun and Chiron are very close together. And uh, moon and Leo is fire. It's going to be strong energy around action, around creativity, around the arts, around getting attention and fame. And it's also energy around self-promotion, graphic design, um, that type of thing. So promoting yourself is really strong Friday the 31st. And let's see, there's nothing other than that 
immediately that strikes my eye other than the full moon coming up in April, which we'll talk about next week. I don't see any moon. Uh, there's a new moon, the 21st, which is last week. New moon solar eclipse next month, April 19th. That's what the um, Aries energy is going to do, a new moon eclipse. But um, let's look real quick at the chart of what's going on now. And you can see in this chart, um, this is just for now, whole sign. We've got Neptune at 25 Pisces. We've got Saturn at one Pisces. So we're getting coming and going energy of new beginning, new energy. So um, we've got the Leo energy here on the horizon because I did a moment, a chart for the moment. But Mars is about ready to go into Cancer. As I said, by Saturday, it will be in Cancer. And that is going to be strong energy around, around uh, home and family. We've got North Node in Taurus, Juno in Taurus, Venus in Taurus, Moon today is in Taurus, and Uranus in Taurus. A lot of energy around money, around beauty, aesthetics, retail, um, expanding our diet, changing our diet, growing our own diet. It can also include cooking and making our food. It does revolve around food because Taurus is a very strong energy of agriculture and growing our food. And then uh, Aries energy with the sun, Mercury, Chiron, Jupiter, Vesta is all about promotion, promoting ourselves, emergencies, blood, the head, energy around athleticism and taking action because Mars, and then that's going to be answering, like I said, to Mars and Cancer. So it's going to really be more focused in this upcoming week around where are we taking action around the home? How are we getting the attention we need within the family members? And Neptune, Saturn, Pisces, the Pisces energy is the hidden. It's also psychic awareness. It is looking into the past, really expressing ourselves through the past. The career Saturn is wanting us to take ownership of our codependent nature. It wants us to take our ownership back of what we're doing around creative endeavors, around artistic nature. Pluto and Aquarius is, again, talked to death by this point, but it is alternatives, unusual energy, things that are unexpected, things that are not reliable, things that come in and give us a different point of view, a different perspective. People come in and want to show us the alternative. So Aquarian energy and those born with strong Aquarius in the late 90s can definitely see a picking up of wanting to show the anti side, A-N-T-I, the opposite side of something. So just on principle, a lot of times Aquarian influenced people will take counterpoints to show hypocrisy. That's one of the aspects and behaviors of the Aquarian energy. Entrepreneurship wanting to be free to do our lives our own way, um, coming up with ways of earning money on our own. South node in Scorpio, getting closer and closer to Libra. It is starting to really um, set in an energy of psychology, of value systems and joint finances. Also legalities are coming in. Um, anything associated with law and research and mystery. This is also an energy of mediums and mediumistic behavior. Pluto is also connected to the South Node now because Pluto, the ruler of Scorpio, is in square to the South Node. So there is some deep psychological energy coming in about family issues, family behaviors, threads that go down through time, especially with Saturn and Pisces. And I'm sorry about all the bells and whistles. I've got notifications turned on and until I record, they don't pop up. So now I'm getting a lot of bells and whistles. So if something resonates to you, the bell will reinforce that as a message from spirit. And then Pallas Athena's in Cancer, giving us a strong warrior feminine energy. We can also be moving in to an energy where we find our person. And that's coming in with a Taurus. That's coming in with Pluto in Aquarius. And Pallas Athena in Cancer rules home. A lot of times when we find a person that we want to move in with or marry, the house of home and family is really triggered or Cancer energy, as well as Libra, Taurus, because it's ruled by Venus. Libra is ruled by Venus. And so we'll see a lot of connectivity with that. Pallas Athena is showing us kind of that 
ideal woman, ideal feminine, and may be triggered in your chart. If it is triggered in your chart, you may end up finding the person who is really a significant person for you. Pluto and Aquarius is waking up people's hearts and making us more aware of connectivity with other people. Okay, that's all for this week. Thank you for bearing with me. I'm going to do a bunch of editing and pop it up there on the internet. Again, I appreciate your patience with me right now until I can really get my um, schedule so that I can get this recorded a little bit longer. It'll be about 30 minutes. We're going to cut back on how long this podcast is only because it's just a lot of editing when it runs over 30 minutes and I want to make sure I can get up for you. Thank you again for showing up every week. And I do appreciate it too. And we'll see you again next week. Take care. Bye and peace, my friend. Moon in and that it doesn't even matter. Hi, this is Shelly. Thank you for joining us this week. To contact me for a private reading, go to angeliczodiac.com under the readings tab. To purchase my ebook, Learn Astrology, you can find it at angeliczodiac.com. Background music was provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com. Be sure to check back next week and subscribe through iTunes at Astro Energy Astrology Show.